Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I'm going to let you guys know about a bit of a series that I'm going to start working on with Photoshop tutorials. And they're basically going to be based around common retouching issues, mainly to do with fashion photography, but some of them will pretty much apply to all types of photography. And this sort of came about when I was just sort of thinking the other day about all those like really kind of annoying sometimes um, issues that come up with photographs so you might have like the perfect shot and then something's just off about it or something's there that you don't want to be there or something needs to be improved or just like small things within the photograph that can be changed and I just want to show you guys how to do some of those things so I've actually written a whole list of things that I'd like to probably do some videos on. So the first one today I'm going to start with is removing stray hairs. And this is like something that I deal with pretty much nearly every time I have a shoot, um, especially if it's outdoors and especially if it's a windy day or it's a bit breezy. Um, and it's probably one of the most annoying things to try and correct because there's usually so many stray hairs and once you start editing them, if you over edit, it can look really obvious and just not good at all. So I want to start with showing you guys just how to basically remove stray hairs in a really easy way. So I'm just going to zoom in on this photo I've got here. And as you can see, there's quite a few stray hairs just on the side here. So there are a few ways to do this, however I'm just going to show you the way that I generally do it and that will usually be by starting with duplicating the layer, so dragging the background layer into the new layer icon just there. So that will duplicate it and so once we've made our new layer I usually go over to the healing tool so for this particular issue I'm going to use the spot healing brush tool I think it's probably the easiest one we can use and I like to zoom in quite close and try and get your brush size probably very similar to the strand of hair that you're going to be removing, just similar size. And all you need to do, because this is a sampling tool, is just run your mouse or your graphics pen or whatever you're using over it and it will remove most of it. You may need to go over it over parts a few times just to kind of get it disappearing altogether. But yeah, I basically if the, if the hairs are quite obvious like that and they stick out, that's usually how I tend to remove them and it's a really easy way of doing it. Um, you can also use the clone tool and I don't know if I've actually made a tutorial yet. I don't think I have on how to use it. But all the clone tool is, is essentially, it is what it says it does. It clones parts of the image. So all you do is hold Alt on the keyboard, click somewhere that you want to clone. And then you can just run the tool over it to kind of, okay, that didn't work very well, but you get the idea. You can just kind of like give it that little bit extra of a finish. And then you just run it over the area. So I'm just going to bring down the opacity and just to kind of get a bit more of a better finish on that. Okay, so that's generally how I like to remove really obvious stray hairs. Um, and especially when there's not a lot of stray hairs to remove, that's, that's how I like to do it. However, on this photograph, I'm going to show you a little bit more of an issue that comes with getting stray hairs in photographs. And that's when you've got a lot of them at the same time and it, and it just starts to look a bit messy and it's really going to take a really, really long time to go and remove each one of those. And you can do that, and I have done that before, um, but sometimes it will look very obvious if you go in and do that anyway. So I kind of feel this technique's a little bit more subtle in the way of removing them because it doesn't essentially um, remove them altogether. It just kind of makes them look less obvious. So you can 
just for some of the more, you know, standout hairs there, I guess, you can go and run the spot healing brush tool over those. And that will remove most of those. As I said, you may have to go over some areas a couple of times just to kind of get it looking clean. So you can do that with some parts of this particular photo, I guess. But the way I want to show you is by using the clone tool. So we can just go up here to the clone tool, make it... I like to make the brush size quite large and the hardness... I'd like to make it quite a soft brush and opacity right down as well probably about to maybe 14 15 percent and then I like to clone areas away from the hair and run it over those particular areas and because we've got a cloudy sky over here I'm gonna sample from over there and then go ahead and just run it over those hairs there. So as you can see, it kind of makes it a little bit more less obvious, which is what we want, definitely. Um, and I think it would look a lot more natural than going in and removing each tiny little hair because you will start to get a lot of like messiness going on there and it's just not not what you want for the photograph so we'll just go over this area here the reason I make the brush so soft and the opacity so low is because we want to keep it looking natural we don't want to make it look like it has been edited um, and I find that's kind of the best way to do it. So I'm just going to do, I'll take a snapshot. And as you can see, I'll just zoom out. Going back to the original image, up here especially, it's a bit more noticeable. And it just looks a little bit more clean now. Um, what I also like to do if the hairs are still standing out a little bit, which I think they are in this photo, you can go up to this selection tool here and just run it around the area where there are quite a few hairs. And actually, before I do that, I like to feather it out pretty much maybe up to 50 pixels and just select the area where there are a lot of hairs. And then generally I go down to filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And I just like to give it a little bit more blurriness so it's not so obvious. And we'll take another snapshot. Okay, so the original looks like... can't really see it from far away, but the original looks like that. And that's what it looks like now. So obviously I've probably gone a little bit overboard in this section and a little bit too much with the blurb, but you can kind of get the idea of, of how that can work. Um, so yeah, that's probably the best way I'd say to get rid of a lot of stray hairs without going too overboard. It's one thing I don't like to do, even though it's such a pain in the butt problem, but yeah, I think that's probably the easiest way of doing it too as I said you can go in on a lot of the hairs and if you really take your time with it it can look good um, but there are certain circumstances where it can still look a bit over edited so I think adding the blur especially kind of makes it blend into the background a little bit and makes it just kind of look like the apertures sort of you know blurred it out and yeah so I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. It's not very long, but I'm planning on making these hopefully weekly if possible. And I really want to do this series and hope it will be helpful for any of you guys out there wanting to do fashion photography or retouching, anything to do with that sort of thing. And yeah, so I hope you guys enjoyed and hopefully I'll have my next video up soon. All right, if you guys have any requests, please let me know because I've got a list here, but 
I might be missing something. So yeah, definitely let me know. All right. Thanks guys for watching and see you next time. Bye.